35. Fourth foot for Shirley Shelton. Uh, Cindy Lake and Tasha Heath. So, whoever would like to come first and identify yourself for the record, please. Yes, ma'am. My name is Melissa Letourneau. That's L E T O U R N E A U. My address is 4485 Penwood 89102. And I just wanted to speak on items. <coughs> excuse me. 17, 19, 26, and 45, having to do with. Um, the intelligent transportation system predominantly. Um, I understand I have a limited amount of time, so I'll try to be as brief as possible. Reg item, regarding items 17, 19, 25, 26, and 45, let me say that technology is an amazing thing. And it has taken a world leaps and bounds in my lifetime alone. And while I want to see a society benefit from technology, I would prefer to see it start in the private sector and become widespread among the people before the government is able to afford to institute the most basic technologies and corresponding infrastructure. Does the government need to develop, fund, and construct technologies that will feed them information that they have no business having necessarily? Or doesn't that practice only give government another means of control and taxation? That's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hodges, you want to go? And then I've got three cards here. I sure do. Uh, yes, sir, you want to come? And then I've got cards, like I say, for Ms. Cindy Lake, Tasha Heath, and Shirley Shelton. So if you want to, folks want to come down as well. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. My name is Robert Walker. I'm here to speak on agenda number 55, the sales tax for increasing the number of policemen that we have or whatever. We have currently more than 18 armed police forces operating in Clark County, Nevada. More than 18. Depends on how many federal agencies are operating here on how many we actually have, upwards of 23 or 24. In addition to all that, every casino has its own private police department. Gated communities have their own paid private armed security guards. We have whack and hut services protecting the regional justice center which really gives me confidence in our police department. There are 2,743 officers according to Sheriff Gillespie. Of those 2,743 officers, 84,827 arrests were made. That average, averages 2.5 arrests per month per officer. I want to fire them myself. They're not doing a very good job. Richard Collins, police captain, pay and benefits for 2012, 585,000, $593.23. A little over the top. Jack Weaver, Salary and benefits for 2012, 492916 dollars and 99 cents. And you want more money? They want a raise? Ladies and gentlemen, the children have no shoes upon their feet. I think our taxes are more than high enough, and we have more than enough police officers supporting Starbucks, as it is. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I ask you to please refrain from applause for any of the public speakers, uh, so we can move it along out of courtesy to everyone involved. Hello, my name is Tasha Heath. Yes, ma'am. You can pull that down a little bit. There you go. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, um, I am opposed to all of the items I put on my card, but I am only speaking on item 55. 
Is that okay? <laughs> You're welcome to speak anything you want. If okay. you want to say what you opposed to, there's a long list of numbers there. Yes, I can do that. I am I am opposed to items 17, 19, 26, 45, 34, 35, 36, 44, 46, and 55. Um, on items 55, uh, we request an organization outside of the state of Nevada and with no connections to Nevada conduct a forensic audit to ensure that the investigation and results are not tainted by a bias corp and corruption uh, and that no intimidation or isolation tactics will be used to influence the report. These conditions are well known to ex exist inside the LVMPD and are often employed on the local media. Millions of dollars are being wasted every, every year in LVMPD and millions of dollars are being wasted, are being asked for each year by Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Sheriff Doug Douglas Galipsy. Certainly asking for a forensic audit is justified when Galipsy asked, um, has asked that our sales tax increase in a proposed Assembly Bill 496 to pay for more officers' equipment salary increases and for existing officers and benefits. It is time we as a community demand accountability and it starts with a forensic audit. Sheriff Ellipsy testified before the Nevada T Assembly Taxation Committee that crime has increased. However, according to the Sheriff's own annual report for 2011, crime has decreased. The Sheriff lied repeatedly to the public to get symp sympathy for his own agenda and gain ego. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I've got cards also from Cindy Lake and Shirley Shelton. I have to raise it. That's unusual. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for morning. having me. Cindy Lake. <clears throat> when, the, when these taxes, I'm sorry, I'm opposed to all of the items on my card as well. I don't have that list, but mainly I'll talk on 55. Do you want me to read them for you? Sure. Uh, 17. I think it's 17. 17, 26, 19, 45, 34, 35, 36, 44, 46, and 55. Sounds right. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 33, uh, 30, uh, 34, 35, and 36, I believe, are the property tax, um, proposed property tax increases, and 55 is the sales tax increases. I don't think any proposed property tax increases. <clears throat> is that wrong? Is that incorrect? Yeah. Right. Fuel tax or okay, I'm opposed to all taxes. Let me just say that, please, for the record. <laughs> when these taxes were passed, um, Las Vegas was in a boom period, and um, I think we can all agree that we're no longer experiencing a boom, but a bust, a huge bust, and the entire community will suffer and is impacted by any tax increase. Um, as my um, co-speaker said uh, we, we should have an audit um, of where our money is going before we raise any taxes and really that's all I want to say thank you thank you very much Ms. Shelton good morning good morning commissioners all of you I'm Shirley Shelton I'm uh, opposed, I'll name the ones I'm opposed to. I'm going to speak on 34, 35, and 36. I'm opposed to 17, 19, 26, 34, 35, 36, 45, 46, and 55. In general, I'm also, you can make the statement, I'm opposed to all increase in taxes or added tax. On the agenda items 34, 35, and 36, while property taxes in and of themselves suggest that the individual can never truly own anything, residents generally accept the payment of property taxes to the county. And in exchange for that property tax and other taxes, the most basic thing that they would expect is for the county to do is build and maintain the infrastructure. If the county cannot afford to perform its most basic function of maintaining existing or building new infrastructure, then it needs to reconsider its financial priorities and start making deep 
and dramatic budget cuts. Because the action of the county against these homeowners in these situations is not only unethical and immoral, it's arguably, arguably a violation of the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to address the Board of County Commissioners? Good morning, everyone. Commissioners? Good morning. Uh, my name is Leandro Gonzalez. Uh, you may have an interest card on. Uh, I apologize. I don't. I was just given the three cards that I read. It's, it's probably in here somewhere, but you're welcome to speak. I appreciate it. I apologize. Thank you, I, don't uh, I didn't call your name on. I'm sorry. All right. I'm calling them. I just want to speak in opposition to Agenda 55 regarding the sales tax increase. Okay. And I do appreciate your opposition as well as Commissioner Junchulia. Junchulia. Kiliani, thank you. And I hope that your colleagues will join you in the opposition. Uh, as we know, there's been economic turmoil and there's been a very slow recovery here in Las Vegas, but I don't believe that a tax increase is the answer. Uh, we know that poverty eventually leads to crime and a sales tax increase is only going to increase poverty on those that are already struggling to get by. Um, an audit was mentioned, and that is absolutely essential before they can justify any sort of tax increase. I want to point out a few things. Um, you know, as we saw, uh, Metro Police got a new headquarters recently, costing millions of dollars there on MLK Boulevard. And I also want to mention some of the payouts and settlements that were given to some of the families of those that were killed uh, in 2012-2011. You know, they didn't have to die, but unfortunately, the taxpayer was the one who had to, to pay for the uh, wrongful deaths. And I, again, that's what I want to speak on, and I hope that, uh, again, the rest of you commissioners will join Commissioner Sislak and Commissioner G. Okay, thank you. That's what all of us learned, just call it Commissioner G. Uh, yes, morning, sir, Mr. Hodges. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Anthony Hodges. I want to speak on item 12. And and 13 for social services, especially 12. Children, families, they're very important. And a lot of the children and the family, they all, when times, when times are good, sometimes it's kind of fall in the hole and fall on the system. I've got to ask you to look this way because the camera fall, wants to get your face. On, Everybody on fall, TV fall wants on to see system. you. Uh, and, 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 and it's that's, I'd rather than have children to, like, to, to kind of take in some of the families that fall through the crowd, you know, women and children or whatever. But the objective is that social services should be allocated money at all times, even from the state and feds, and I know the county can only do so much, but you need some help. But yes, there will always be people that will need help even when times are good. When everything is flourishing, just everybody's working and whatever. But you'll always have a certain amount of people that fall in the cracks. And now times are bad. You've got an entire family who lost their jobs and whatever, and their homes and stuff. And they're falling on the system. So it's not getting any smaller. It's getting larger. And the need is even more greater. So I'm saying anything you can do to help the families going forward, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Gina Grayson, Nevada Voters for Animals. I'm actually here on agenda item number 43, but first I would like to make sure that the commission is aware of a situation that occurred on May 21st um, where a metro officer uh, saw a dog that jumped over a fence. Um, kids had historically been taunting this dog, which has been put in writing by one of the neighbors. Um, this metro officer apparently either didn't have training or just doesn't have a heart because he decided that the only thing that he could do in response to this dog barking at these kids was to gas his vehicle and run the dog over and drag it down the street. Um, it's bad enough in January when we have a metro officer that goes into a backyard where the family's home and shoots the dog between the eyes, um, which we're still waiting for the investigative report on that. Um, but to have this happen in, on May 21st and then have this uh, family, to add insult to injury, cited for an unsterilized male, which this dog was sterilized if anyone would have actually looked between his legs. Um,